We are here to play some Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, I am Rick. I'm the storyteller for tonight. And uh, I'm going to let everyone go around and introduce themselves. Kind of tell us where we can find you, uh, if anywhere. Uh, and then tell us a little bit about your character. And who wants to go first? I mean, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, hi, I, my name's Sam. I'm from Fable Mancers. Uh, I'm streaming to you today from the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam Nation. Uh, today I'll be playing a uh, Ventru uh, a Siren type uh, Hunter uh, Quinton. Uh, you can call me Q. Uh, and uh, I'll pass it up to Freedom. Hello, my name is Freedom. I am Thunder Wizard 10 on Instagram. I make and sell custom terrain for TTRPGs for all you nerds to enjoy. Um, just released a new product and I'm really excited about it. Go to my Instagram. I've been talking a lot about it. Check it out. And my website is thunderwizard.games. Um, also a on part of the stream called Total Party Paint, where me and my fellow artist friends sit around, do arts and crafts, and talk bullshit. Uh, so check that out at Total Party Paint. Just all the socials, Twitch, everything, just Total Party Paint. And I'll pass it over to uh, Shannon slash Cassandra. Oh. Sorry, I'm supposed to say my character, right? Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yes, no, yes. Um, wow. Where are my manners? Um, I'm playing a Banu Hakim uh, farmer uh, named Jedediah. Both literally and uh, figuratively. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Definitely. I'm a, I'm a bit of a bit of a cowboy. Uh, have a, a beef farm. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Shannon. Hi, I am Shannon. Um, you can find me all over the place pretty much at Imagineif. I am a G I N I F. Um, and I just joined Twitch, um, Imagineif Media. And today I am playing uh, Cassandra, so Ravnos, um, and brand new to this adventure and pretty stoked about it. Uh, Cassandra is a uh, kind of a runner, uh, likes to hide in the shadows, find secrets, pass messages. Pretty slick. Yeah, Cass is a pursuer type. And also, I think it's really cool, I just want to point out, uh, because you took the, uh, what was it, the... Mm, where did that go? Oh, I have a murder uh, the of crows. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yes, yeah. I also have a murder of crows. Because why very not? Cool. Yeah. Like I've I've run this a number of times, did not know that was an option. So uh, I know what I <laughs> whenever I play. <laughs> I was like, I can have animals, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and last but not least, Link. Yeah, uh, I'm Link. Um, I am Ghostly Reverb on pretty much every social media, um, including Twitch, which I'm uh, kind of starting up now. Um, so definitely check that out. I'm probably going to be streaming tomorrow on there. Um, and I'm going to be playing Greta, who is a uh, Toreador uh, scene queen, a uh, little tiny bit of a social media star still blooming in her her uh, uh, fame there. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's a, a fantastic segue into what we're doing here tonight. So you all have made your way to Istanbul, Turkey, one of the most ancient cities in the world, because you have heard rumors that Lilith, the original vampire, has returned. And for those of you who are familiar with Vampire the Masquerade lore, uh, you probably have noticed that I am breaking from the canon lore. Kane, in this case, is not the original vampire. Uh, in the official lore, he was taught the disciplines by Lilith. So to me, it makes sense. She must have been the real, and uh, he just kind of took the, the title, and that's what we're going with. So as you all have made your way here, uh, who wants to kind of give a brief synopsis of why you all are here? What your purpose is in seeking out Lilith? It looks like you want to say something. I was just like, hey, <laughs> uh, I don't know about as a group, uh, but me personally as uh, Cassandra, 
I'm here because I think it's cool as shit that she's here. And uh, I just want to absorb whatever she's got to give. Yeah. So I'm just trying to be near. Fantastic. And Link, we kind of talked about why Greta is here uh, just before we started. Yeah. Um, Greta's looking to kind of increase her fame and get a little bit more of a followers different things like that ride those coattails so yeah hard. for sure <laughs> anybody else i feel like as a as a sort of adjudicator to uh the rule of you know the vampiristic individual um as a banu hakim i'm here to determine if this is a falsehood or if she really has risen Absolutely. What about Q? Well, I'm just tired. I'm tired of all the absolute bullshit that is going on with the Camarilla right now. It's upside down. Things aren't the way they should be, the way they're meant to be. I may be new to this game, but I can smell a rat. And I want to take it out. Love it. Love to see it. So I need everyone to quickly give me a rouse check, which is a single D10 roll. And it is a pass fail kind of thing just to see as you rise for the evening, how you do. Just a D10? Yep. Is it is it a standard D10 or do I use one of these fancy? You are more than welcome to use your vampire dice. So okay. it would be a black one? Uh, red. Yeah. Black? Either oh, one. I don't know. Red is hunger, it said, so I don't know. Yeah, the, is this doing? is directly related to hunger. Uh, rouse check okay. is rousing the blood. It is using your uh, blood that you have fed upon in order to reanimate your corpse every day. Okay. All right, I don't know. Can we see this? Mm, kind of, sort of. Looks like an onk. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, an onk is a success. Okay. I'm not sure that there are different versions of that. Yeah. I don't have an onk on my dice, but I did roll an eight. Perfect. Uh, when you're using standard dice, a six or above is a success. I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your hunger does increase. Uh, we all start at two. Q is at three, though. Storyteller. Yes. Um, I have a bane that is blood addiction. Mm -hmm. um, would that apply in this instance? That's or is a, that when I like... Uh, that's when I slake at least 100 hunger level. Uh, tape provides hunger frenzy test, difficulty two, plus bane severity. Hmm. Okay, yeah, in this case, it would not apply. Okay, cool. And what about Greta? Uh, yeah, I, I got an eight as well, so I passed. Okay, perfect. So only one of you has gained a little bit of hunger. Uh, you all know, as relatively new, but somewhat established kindred, that in order to reduce your hunger, you must feed. And so I would imagine it for most of you is not super urgent to feed. Q though might be kind of getting on the, the edge of hangry a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just uh, no touching down in a new country. You gotta you gotta sample the local cuisine. <laughs> Yeah, best cure for jet lag is to eat something, right? Or someone. <laughs> <laughs> so we are picking up at a club that is called the Meat Locker. It is grimy and dirty. It is dark with pulsing music. But you all know that this is essentially a neutral ground. The main level of the club is accessible to everyone. Uh, 
human kindred probably wouldn't allow a Garu uh, if they were aware of them, but otherwise it is open to the public. But you have established yourselves as kindred in this area relatively recently and have learned that beneath that is a essentially what the Camarilla would call an Elysium, where you are able to go and have a neutral ground with other kindred. And so, would you all be in the club proper, or would you all go straight to the Elysium area? Greta's definitely gonna spend some time in the club first. Just having a good time, probably taking some pictures, you know. Yeah. Just having having fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Cass is uh, hanging out along the back wall, kind of just watching. Fantastic. Hmm. I think Jedediah would have grabbed a, a whiskey and uh, headed straight up to the Elysium area. That's probably so. I, I will let you know. Uh, Kindred, typically, unless they have certain uh, abilities, cannot eat or drink human food without uh, forcefully regurgitating it. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, so I like to sit with if, it. If you, if you want, you <clears throat> could uh, grab a person who has imbibed some whiskey and uh, get it that way. Um... In theory, since I'm a farmer, I actually don't partake in the drinking of human blood. Sure. Um, maybe uh, I get I get the uh, the whiskey and I mix it with uh, some fine bovine. Uh, yeah. Interesting. So it would not do anything for your hunger to imbibe blood that is not directly from a living creature. Uh, unless you, again, have certain attributes, you're more than welcome. You can drink that if you would like, but it will not do anything for your hunger. That's fine. Not very hungry right now. It's about the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's 100% about the aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Uh, I will... Uh, is the... Uh, the like deep pulsing like bass of the, of like the music i want to like scan the dance floor and trying to find the most energetic person in that crowd <laughs> absolutely uh why don't we get our first roll out of the way and give me a wits awareness roll please Doo -doo -doo, wits and awareness Oh, three hunger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so that will be uh, so five and three of those. Okay. So for those of you who are new to Vampire, uh, whenever you make a roll, depending on how much hunger you have, in this case, Q has three. Uh, you would replace three of your normal dice from your die pool with those hunger die. In this case, because he only has three wits, all of his die are hunger die. So fun. So fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is three successes with a 10 on one of them. Oh, but okay. I need two, right? Before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a, a crit success is two tens or, you know, four tens. Uh, or, Shannon, if you're using the vampire dice, it's the onk with the little, like, extra shit on there. The fancy ones. Yeah, I was noticing that there's one that has uh, two little yeah. extra things on there. And there's one that has three. So I don't know what the difference is. Interesting. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't own any. So <laughs> I just normally use yeah. regular D10s. Uh, okay, so the, so the three is a crit and everything else is a success. Yeah, we'll go with that. And then, the, okay, and then there's one with a skull. Yeah, that is a one. Uh, if you get two ones, okay. that is a crit fail. Okay, thank you. 
Not a problem. Uh, so Q, you see that there is someone who uh, seems to be, well, actually first, Greta, you said you were here taking pictures. Would you be like out on the dance floor? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Q, you see that there is uh, someone of indeterminate gender trying to dance with Greta, who just seems very energetic, very happy to be there. Uh, maybe even recognizes Greta, not that you would know that, but uh, Greta, you, you might have overheard through the music, uh, like, oh yeah, I follow you on social media, you know, it's so crazy to meet you here. Yeah, totally. You want to take a picture? Let's take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. You see all of this. Uh, are you choosing to interact with them or just watch? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to watch and see how, how skillful a dancer they truly are um, after uh, taking these pictures, if they're actually going to be moving in time with the, the, the pulse and the bass. Mm, interesting. Yeah, let me uh, let me see. I'll make my own roll. And also, I guess trying to see if if Greta's laying claim here, then uh, I don't want to move on on that turf. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it does seem like they are a pretty skilled dancer. Uh, and Greta, would you be looking to feed on this individual, or are you just there to vibe? Um, I think right now, uh, especially not being super hungry, um, probably just there to vibe at the moment. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, Q, it does not look like uh, this human has any kind of claim from any kindred. Um, then I'll move in, go... Have you seen these live? They're much better live. <laughs> and they're just like, what? I, I can't hear you. Uh, I will attempt to um, move like seductively towards them and try to get them to emulate what uh, I'm putting out. Absolutely. Uh, why don't you give me charisma persuasion? Uh, charisma and persuasion. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, so hungry. <laughs> uh, that is uh, three successes, and uh, yeah, that that's three successes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, they definitely seem like you know the the music is a little bit hard to hear, but they go from kind of dancing with Greta to dancing with you and kind of follow you maybe off to the side of the crowd a little bit. Have you seen the artist Forza? Mm. Their works of modern art are quite exquisite. I, I, I don't really understand art, but maybe you could show me. You don't understand art? Well, then you'll have to make up for lost time. Well, what can you tell me about this artist? When you hear the music around you, imagine seeing those pulses on the canvas as it resonates within your heart. They just seem totally entranced at this point. Uh, I'll take it further and uh, use one of my presence abilities, uh, uh, Melpomene. Absolutely. Um, to take them to uh, like a dark corner somewhere out of the sight of everyone here. And because this is ostensibly a kindred club, uh, even though you're in more of the public area, it is very well set up to have little nooks and crannies where someone could go to feed, potentially. Uh, 
Uh, and I will attempt to feed on this person once I feel like I'm in the safety of the darkness. And remind me, what does your ability that you're using do? Um, it allows me to... Oops. Please pop up. Thank you. Thank you, Demi Plane. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, my ability allows me to, uh, become very, like, siren-like and entrancing and, uh, have this person, like, just kind of hang off of my every word. Uh, Fantastic. And having, like, that connection that we, we established just helps lure them away without having that gnawing suspicion. Let them go, let, let go of their apprehension. Absolutely. Uh, is there any kind of role that you make or that they make? Uh, the cost is free, so uh, no. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, uh, they just seem totally uh, enraptured with you at this point. And they're like, please, go on. I, I want to hear everything. It's best if I show you. Absolutely. And they follow you off to a dark corner. And we're going to cut over to Cass. Cass, you were kind of the wallflower uh, off to the side watching. And you witness as this little scenario goes down uh, of Greta dancing with this individual, Q coming over, and uh, just going off into a dark corner with them shortly thereafter. What would Cass be doing? So uh, Cass has an ability to not be seen and just completely blend in if she's standing still. Um, but she also can do it while moving around. So I think that I would um, really not be paying too much attention to what they're doing. I'm more working the room, uh, looking to see if there's any excitement going on, um, anything that's a little bit out of the ordinary. I'm looking for not the club scene, people who are in the club who are, uh, you know, not part of, they're here looking for something else. I'm I'm Lilith hunting kind of right now. You know, I'm like, <laughs> are people are people here because they're uh, they're checking us out, or they're looking yep. for her kind of thing. So I'm just gonna kind of slink around um, while I'm doing that, and I'm not too hungry, so I'm not actively searching. But if I see an opportunity for something, I might take it. Absolutely. Uh, why don't you also give me a wits plus awareness roll? Okay, let's see. So I have three in wits, so what, does that mean I roll three dice? Well, you've got three in wits, and then you've got three in awareness as well, so it would be six. So I roll and because you have two okay. hunger, you replace two of them with the red die. Okay, so I'm rolling four black and two red. That's what we're saying. Yep. Okay. I'll have this all down by the end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I got a crit on a red. And Just then I got, what's that? Just a single one? Uh, no, two. And then, um, and then I got two regular, or two success on the black. So two crits on red and two success on black. Well, it would be one crit on red. You have to have okay. two of those. Uh, but what it does is it makes two successes. Well, I did. I did. I rolled two red die and both were crits. Yep. Yep. So that's what I'm okay. saying is in order to get a crit, you have to have both of them come up with that 10. But because you did, it turns those two successes on the, the hunger die into four successes. So that makes it six total, which is okay. pretty freaking good. Um, cool. So you are <laughs> prowling for anything out of the ordinary. And you definitely spot that there are several people uh, in very business-like attire who do not seem to have any interest in the club scene itself. Uh, they seem to be having a conversation uh, within their, their small group off to the side. Uh, from, where you're, from where you are, you can't hear what they're saying over the music but it seems like they are the ones who stand out the most. 
Okay. Am I close enough where I can get a read on Greta and give her kind of like a sly eye as I go follow? I think the only issue there would be you would have to make yourself noticeable if you are, you know, mm -hmm. kind of using your stealthy abilities uh, to be unseen. You would have to make sure that she can actually see you. But yeah, you can see Fair. where she. Yeah, so I guess I'll just check and then I'm going to kind of uh, get to a spot where I can follow them to maybe listen in on the conversation. Absolutely. And Greta, as Cass tells you about this, would you still be out on the dance floor or would you be doing anything? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not super stealthy, um, <laughs> so I definitely don't think I would go follow. Um, but definitely kind of like more keeping an eye like on what's around me now, like knowing that there's maybe some people to, you know, that stand out a little bit. I will say as uh, somewhat of an influencer, seeing these people who, you know, stand out, who are dressed very businesslike, mm -hmm. uh, it does seem like it poses a potential opportunity. Just for fun and flair, too, I'm going to say that before I, the, the way that I told uh, Greta was uh, I came up and did just like a, basically like this little sultry dance around and with whatever she had going on. Um, and course. yeah, and then, and then kind of just danced a little bit and then slowly disappeared. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, so I guess, um, I could definitely, like, approach them and kind of, like, not, like, go talk to them necessarily, but kind of, like, get, like, close to where they are and see if maybe I can, like, hear anything that they're saying if they're talking to each other first. Sure. Maybe, get, you know. Get kind of a vibe check. Yeah. Yeah, like, maybe pretend to get a drink or yeah. to talk to someone else in the area. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Jed, as the only person who went into the Elysium, uh, what would you be looking to do while you're there? <laughs> it is much less uh, chaotic. There are not people, you know, dancing. You can still hear the bass pounding from above you but it is a lot quieter. You're able to have a more casual conversation and you see kindred and humans uh, who seem to have been potentially fed upon or uh, have been turned into ghouls, which is when a uh, kindred essentially feeds their blood to someone and can control them to a certain extent. Uh, they just are lounging about, having their conversations. Um, I think I would. Uh, I think he'd look around and just like kind of rub his temples, be like, "Oh, goddamn, that music was god awful." <laughs> and I'll be like keeping a, an eye out for maybe someone who looks like they might have some information, like someone who looks like they're in the know. Okay. Um, yeah, I will also have you give me a wits awareness roll. What's so uh, what's plus aware so what's plus awareness, right? Yep. Let's see. All right, so then okay, awareness plus wits roll. So details oh i'm trying to get a hang of this um what would be the best way to roll it manually i would roll four d10 right and then yeah so what i usually would do like if you're rolling physical dice uh just set aside two so roll four and then roll two separately roll four and roll the no, roll four roll two separately okay uh so that's a six, a seven, and then two eights. Okay, on the regular dice or all together? 
so so am I wait, am I rolling four dice or six dice altogether? Just so I can be clear. Six altogether. Six altogether. Okay, six. okay, okay. So that's that that's uh that's for the first four, and then I gotta roll two more. So many dice. I get to use <laughs> D10. But I don't get to use D10s as much. <laughs> Not since I played Paladin, and that's two sevens on the separate ones. Holy crap! Uh, so yeah, that is six successes on six dice. That is <laughs> not something I think I've seen before. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see several individuals who uh, seem to be discussing something. You can't tell from a distance, uh, but you see that there is a woman with them who seems to almost have uh, like a supernatural presence to her, which is saying something because you're all supernatural creatures to begin with. But there is just an aura about her that is nothing you've ever seen before. I'll, I'll clock that. Um, does it look like she is surrounded by a significant amount of people? Does it look like it would be hard to approach. Does it look like she's like involved in stuff, something right now? It seems like they're having a pretty serious conversation, but there's not a lot of people, maybe three or four. Two hmm. decisions. Um, I think I want to uh, um, wait for a proper opportunity a opportunity to uh, <laughs> to to um, go over there and um, you know strike up a conversation. Um, like if it takes like a couple minutes, I'll like you know stand by whatever the uh, Elysium equivalent of the bar is, <laughs> <laughs> and then just like wait for my opportunity to just kind of approach. Um, yeah, yeah, and I love you know traditionally in TTRPGs, there's the saying don't split the party what did we do we immediately split the party <laughs> of course yeah also I love that, the, the like enforcer is the one in the social situation and <laughs> 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 we're all in like the dean situation <laughs> it's fine everything's fine <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing could go wrong with this situation not at all no I'm so, so cute the so cue you have this individual <clears throat> who is in absolute awe of everything that you are saying and doing. And are you feeding on them just enough to slake your hunger? Or are you fully are you taking this all the way? No, I'm going to just enough to, to, to uh, knock them out for a while. Maybe wake up with a bit of a, a hangover, but um, uh, they interest me. I want to. I want to come back to this at some point. Would you want to maybe try a blood bond with them, or are you not yet ready for that? Mm, yeah, not quite yet. No, sure. I... Got to feel it out a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't make a ghoul lightly. And and they haven't uh, expressed a ton of interest in modern art yet, so I'm. Unless that grows, I don't know if I, I can keep this going. That's fair. That's fair. Um, let's see. How would you go about feeding? Would um, you be forceful or would it be more of a persuasion? Yeah, I'm gonna like like I'm going back and forth between like uh, like using that that uh, that presence that that ability uh, to to like curve them towards where I want them to be, but also like letting off on the gas just to let them have some semblance of consent. But sure. whenever they steer away a little bit, just little nudges, direct the conversation towards going somewhere a lot more intimate. Definitely. I mean, they, they are on board to go into a dark corner with you. Uh, they want to hear more of what you have to say. Uh, and that is where I will take uh, as much as I need and try very hard to hold back from taking it all. <laughs> I think 
you're experienced enough, you're able to resist that urge, I would imagine. And so, yeah, you leave them uh, in this dark corner after you feed. Uh, yeah, and then I'm going to um, put a little uh, bicarbonate pill in their mouth to make it look like they've OD'd a bit. Sprinkle some coffin around, and uh, uh, which is like a designer drug, and uh, leave it for later. Okay. And so we're going to cut back over to Cass. Cass, as you have kind of made your way over to this group of people, uh, you said you're trying to listen in on what they're saying? Yeah. I'm okay. as close as I can be and as still as I can be, basically. Absolutely. To listen in. Mm -hmm. Because of your ability, uh, you're able to hear a little bit more than you might otherwise. Uh, you're able to get a little bit closer than you might want to do. Uh, that would be a little bit in people's bubble, typically. Um, mm -hmm. And you can hear them talking about someone of great importance who has arrived at Elysium. And they seem to be discussing whether this person is legitimate or not. Okay. Do I get pull up any vibe from them as to are they with this person? Are they with the club? Do I get any sense? You definitely can tell they're not with this person. They seem to be maybe people who are regulars here. Okay. It's a, are they um, intense about it? Like they're, my sense of angst behind their, are they real? Is she real? Is it her kind of thing? There's definitely an anxiety to it. Okay. And... I would say, yeah, give me a, give me another wits awareness uh, just to see if you can, over the music, overhear any more specific details. So that's uh, four black and two red still, right? Yep. It's hard to roll all these dice. <laughs> My hands <laughs> are tiny. All right. Uh, that is a crit in the red and a success in the red. And then I've got one, two, three successes in the black. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know. I hope this sticks out for when it's really important. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as you are listening in a little bit more intently, it sounds like these are possibly Camarilla that you think that they're probably concerned if this is Lilith that it will somehow disturb the order of things. Camarilla is very much about preserving the status quo. And the status quo is that they are ostensibly the most powerful sect of Kindred. And so they would see this as a major threat. Okay, cool. And, and Cass is just kind of taking notes of all that because she she'd be okay with the Camarilla going down. <laughs> I think I think all of our coterie is pretty okay with that. <laughs> yeah, so she's just kind of listening in uh, and, and making note of how many, who they are, getting a sense of smell so I can pick them up later, you know, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I mm -hmm. think with as successfully as you rolled, you are able to get a pretty good uh, both visual and olfactory sense of them okay and are these uh these are definitely members of the camarilla not just like you know servants of kind of deal like they're non-human you you can they're definitely kindred uh and typically okay. ghouls even if they know a little bit would not know much of camarilla okay. dealings so oh, cool. Greta. You also were trying to kind of get over in that area and listen in, or at least mm -hmm. feel things out. Um, how would you approach this? Would you be going for a drink or talking to someone nearby? Uh, I think like 
going for a drink um, and kind of like pretending to sip on it a little bit just while I'm like trying to be closer to them without like it being obvious that I'm being closer to them. Okay. Um, let's see. I think because you're trying to listen in, but also be a little bit subtle about it. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you give me dexterity and stealth? Okay. Yeah. Um, so that would be all under the like attributes, right? In the character uh, sheet? Or... Dexterity would be under attribute, yeah. and then skills would be where stealth is. Skills, stealth, stealth. Um, oh, there it is. Uh -huh. So that is... I just did it on the online. Um, looks like... Three failures, one success, and one critical success. Okay. Yeah. So, because it's only a single critical, then it wouldn't mm -hmm. double yeah. anything. But still, two successes. Um, they seem to be kind of side eyeing you a little bit as you are trying to be subtle. Mm -hmm. They don't totally stop their conversation, but you can tell that they're suspicious of you. Okay. Um, I'll definitely like at that point like not get any closer Um, just kind of stay where I'm at and kind of like strike up a conversation with someone next to me try to just play it off like I'm just you know was there coincidentally and not actually right. listening absolutely and Cass would you do anything to let Greta know uh, either what you found out or that you're in the area not yet, because I'm kind of enjoying that she got caught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, classic um, Kindred. Very backstabby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. And Jen. Yeah, And definitely not in a, like, I'm going to take her out kind of way. More in right. a, like, I'm going to give her shit about this later. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Jen, uh, you have spent some time just kind of hanging out by the bar. Uh and you see that it seems like the conversation is starting to kind of come to a natural end with this individual. And I'll, I'll use that as an opportunity to approach this charismatic woman. Okay. And she is very much, uh, this is like a, a, like a Victorian fainting couch. And so she has one arm just kind of up on the back of it and is lounging very casually. Is there, like, another seat uh, nearby? There is not. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll approach, and uh, I'll, like, tilt my hat. I'll be like, pardon me. I couldn't help but notice uh, you're quite a striking individual. Um, it seemed you were having a, a pretty intense conversation. I'm aware that there's some rumors going on. I... Be much obliged if you sit and have a chat with me. I seem to be seated already. Very well. May I? You're welcome to sit on the floor, I suppose. Uh, you're really funny. Um, do I... Is there any sort of uh, indicator as to, like, if she is part of, like... like what group she might be a part of? Is there like any um, sort of tells as to? Potentially there could be. Um, I would say give me, let's do intelligence, probably insight. Insight. So I don't have anything for insight, right? So. Hopefully you've got some points of intelligence. <laughs> I got two, I got two. So I do the same situation for and then two separate? Well, because you only have two die, they will both be hunger die. So you don't have to roll anything separate. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I only roll four dice altogether then, right? You only roll two. Only two. Only... Okay, okay. 
New game, who dis? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Most vampire looking ones. <laughs> Definitely the red glass ones. I'll use my uh, black and silver lightning bolt one. Uh, oh, nice. That's a nine and a nine. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I was so close to it, it being, it looked, I thought it was six and a nine for a second. I was about to be like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Which would both be successes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you can't tell anything specific. Uh, you get a, a lot of different vibes from this person. You know enough about the other clans, even if you don't know a lot, that you can see the possibility of any of the clans, potentially all of the clans in some form or fashion, uh, having a tell within her. So you can't pin it down to just one. I'm, I mean, I'm uncomfortable right now because, um, it's um and i don't recognize her at all like as a specific she, she just, she's not someone i've met before she's not like she's like brand new kindred that i've that i've never seen i'm gonna i'll say i have to be honest i can't say i recognize you I, i've been around here uh several times in my lifetime what brings you to the meat locker Hmm. I suppose, because this is the city's premier location for Kindred, to gather and meet with each other. And I figure I might as well make an appearance. It has been millennia, after all. I'll, like kind of clock that and I'll say um, <clears throat> pardon me where are my manners um, names Jedediah what's yours I think you know and uh, I'll say I, I think I'll be a little unsettled but um, trying not to let it on I'll say is there anything I could get for you in the meantime <laughs> Hmm. What do you propose? Um, I mean, you're in the right place if you want to feed. Oh, I have no trouble feeding. All right, suit yourself. If you need, here's my card. And, like, I'll pull out a Booker Beef Incorporated uh, business card <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> um, you know, my uh, information... Yeah. Uh, why don't you give me a composure and etiquette roll, please? I have three in etiquette and three in composure. Fantastic. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I'm scared. I'm scared, guys. <laughs> don't be scared. I'm going to crush it. Okay. What's the worst okay. that can happen? <laughs> uh, all right. So, this is a very complicated roll all right so i have oh okay so uh, i have three crits right mm -hmm. um i also have uh so one a three and a seven so two of those are not successes that's okay so you had a crit uh because Technically, it's only a crit if you have two tens. Uh, mm -hmm. But that is very successful. You are able to keep your composure. Uh, you do not show any obvious signs of fear or weakness as you hand off your card. And she just stares at it. Just, just stares at it. Doesn't mm -hmm. take it? Nope. Oh. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll look at her and I'll say fine, suit yourself I'll just tell you one thing 
It may have been a while since you've been around, but some of the other kindred might not take it too kindly to any disrespect. See, a lot of people have built up this entire world to suit their needs, and they'll be quick to bring it down. As you're saying this, you're looking at her on this fainting couch, mm -hmm. and suddenly... She's not there. And you hear a voice in your ear say, is that so? And I'll say, anyways, have a, have a nice evening. And I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll like just kind of <laughs> uncomfortably like walk, up, walk off. <laughs> I think that's the best that you could do right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll I'll look for uh, some of these uh, some of the people that I came with. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and you would I probably have noticed uh, that they did not come down to Elysium with you. Mm -hmm. God damn it! Where are these people? <laughs> and I like go like uh, just kind of like uh, grimace at the fact that I'm gonna have to step out into the loud music and the, like the <laughs> the like enclosed like humid space of the club proper yeah it is very moist mm -hmm. very uh much body odor smell mm -hmm. i prefer wide open pastures you know <laughs> <laughs> that's a different kind of moist <laughs> uh, <I> smell manure <laughs> so q after you have fed where would you be headed um, I would like to keep my head, please. <laughs> I suppose. Um, <clears throat> if I, I mean, I doubt I'll be able to see Cass around anywhere, but uh, if I see Greta, maybe try to uh, head over that way. Yeah, uh, it takes a little while. You know, the, the crowd is very thick, but you are able to spot Greta. Uh, you know, she tends to stand out a little bit on purpose. Uh, and so you can spot that she is making conversation with a couple of what appears to be humans. Um, if they look like they're engaging in their sport, I will leave it alone. But if not, then I will uh, walk right up to Greta. I think it's fair to say that uh, this is open game. Yeah. So, interesting crowd here. Are we ready to see the main event? I suppose so. Did you pick up any new followers? Oh, probably. <laughs> A conversion rate like yours is to be envied, my dear. Mm, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I've done about all I can up here right now. Uh, kind of like not looking at the people that I was trying to be stealthy around. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you're ready to head down, I am too. Sounds good to me. And I'll just like uh, to the air. And if there's someone around mm -hmm. here that would like to join us. And the, the crowd of business people all really give you the side eye. They seem to be extra suspicious at this point but I Cass, will... you, can, you can definitely i mean you were listening in on the conversation that these people were having so it is much easier for you to hear q being very loud about uh, yeah. where they're going. <laughs> uh i will also uh seem like the the reaction of the of the crowd um uh shift from like being just like handsome chiseled uh perfect being to just absolutely terrifying Karen mode and like get out of the way I'm going straight for a manager and if you try to get in my way you're you're going down too uh can you can you tell me what Karen mode looks like for Q um just like my face gets a little longer uh you see like um my ears kind of like tuck out a, a little bit uh highlights appear in parts of my hair just like as if catching the light just right like you know that that uh 
wonderful ten dollar box die job just <laughs> radiating fear of why is this person still screaming at me <laughs> i love it i love it uh yeah the side eyes seem to avert a little bit hmm. and as the two of you make your way downstairs cass are you following yeah could i i am but before that could i uh just kind of open up my cloak a little bit and speak to one of my ravens to uh i keep calling them ravens but i'm also calling them murder of crows because i have many of them so <laughs> they're two different things so yeah. i'll talk to one of my crows um and just uh have george go up top just keep an eye on him and uh just one single raven is going to kind of keep to the shadows and fly up uh out of sight just to keep an eye and they'll come find me when they disappear interesting um yeah give me a uh, dexterity plus stealth for your crow all right i don't know what the hell that means let me go find it <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's dexterity is two. And what did you say? Stealth? Yep. Uh, subterfuge? Uh, it's or under physical. Yeah. I got it. Uh, so that's three. Okay. So that means I roll one black and, and two red? Yep. Hey, look at the me learning. Well, here we go. The crow did not go anywhere because that was a fail all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're rolling, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out because I see that uh, Vancouver by Night is in the chat. And uh, this would be much less possible without them because I was fortunate enough to win their Demiplane Nexus giveaway. And so you all are able to use Demiplane for this thanks to Vancouver by Night. So thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. It's been thank awesome you. learning how to play on there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I might actually make the switch to Demi Plane myself for, for my campaigns. I am a big fan. Uh, so what was your result? Uh, fail. Every Everyone was a fail. Okay. Uh, so you... My crow's pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> you cause a bit of a stir as your, your crow refuses to leave and mm -hmm. just starts screaming inside your cloak all right i i just sulk off basically in a huff we're going to talk about this later <laughs> and head and head down there you are also sam that, that pun <laughs> cause a bit of a stir cause a bit of a stir yes nice love it yeah sam is yeah. definitely a pun master <laughs> yeah, and then I'm just going to uh, I'm going to head on down. Yeah. So Greta and Q make their way down first, but shortly thereafter, Cass follows and you all can see probably at this point a uh, visibly shaken Jed. What's happened? Uh, well, this, we have a we have a lot to talk about. Um, I'm going to look around. Is, does it look like there's anyone following these people that are untoward? No. I, I ran into her. Uh, it was unlike her. Mm. Or whatever they may be. Uh, a presence unlike any other I've ever seen. There was a immensity to her presence. Um, and uh, it's going to definitely cause a bit of a stir that she's right here. Tell me, what uh, you y'all see anything out there in the uh, in the club? What, what it's already what? causing a stir. We have Camarilla upstairs. That's not good at all. Is she still here? I, well, um, she 
vanished. She disappeared just right in front of my eyes. Uh, I'm going to slap him across the face because he's like got to get his shit together. I'm what's, so... the, what's the matter with you? I mean, uh, like you'll see like the, the Sith eyes like <laughs> dramatically like look as I like kind of hiss. Um, uh, Keep it together. You try to keep it together when she's staring you down. I don't know where she went. I tried to um, speak with her for a moment, and then she just vanished right before my eyes. I haven't been able to pick up on her position since there. We have to decide right. what we're going to do. If Car Carmarilla's coming through the Sarsaparilla, if Carmarilla's... Sarsaparilla! Sarsaparilla's a whole other thing. If they're, if, they're, if, they're, if they're here and they're looking... And, uh, I mean, Q, I, I'm, I'm worried looking. about what would happen to you if they found out that she was in your your club, your haven. I wouldn't worry about that. I'm always a step ahead of Calder. I don't know. Okay. Maybe we can secure the exits, but, I mean, she's a millennia old. I don't know if she's got some sort of abilities that are far beyond. I mean, I'm only so old. I, I haven't been around nearly as long as some of these Did other you just kindred. Call a millennial? <laughs> <laughs> Deeply concerned about this notion if she's gotten on the social medias. <laughs> What's wrong with social media? <laughs> Not nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. This uh, worked really hard. And also, what's happy. wrong with being a millennial? <laughs> also, nothing. Clearly, the greatest mm -hmm. strength they comes taste from delicious. <laughs> <laughs> they do taste delicious. You're not wrong. With all the uh, SSRIs, yeah, really the Tide Pods really turned <laughs> out for the best. Yeah, definitely. All the the antidepressants help with, <clears throat> with mm -hmm. everybody's anxiety. What's mm -hmm. the uh, seasoning? I don't think we need to be concerned with the ones upstairs. They, I watched them for quite a while. They didn't do anything. I, I'm not concerned about them. But it's just a bigger problem. We need to keep an eye on. There's always a bigger fish. That's right. Jed, uh, do you need to pick me up? Um, I've got some of your favorite bovine blood. Uh, I, I think I'm fine for now. I'm, I managed to feed before I left. Uh, we'll keep that for later then. Thank you. Perhaps different interjections are required? Where did you see her? She's in, she was in the uh, the Elysium section. I just start Which is walking where we're in. now. Hmm? Oh, okay. We're in the same spot where she was before, mm -hmm. and she's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. She's right on this couch, right here. This exact couch that I'm standing in front of. <laughs> I go sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing particular happens. <clears throat> right here? She was right here? Yeah, right here. Hmm. You see for like a split second, my eyes just glaze over just for a second and then it's gone. And I just stay on the couch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, do we want to look for her? Did she give you any indication? Did she say anything? Did you, did you, was there anything useful out of that? Um, she said that this is the first time she's been awake in a long time. And she also said that uh, she came here. She said that this is the place where kindred meet up in this part of the world. So this was the spot. So clearly she must have gotten her information from somewhere. Must mean someone's just leaking information to people without any sort of recourse as to who that person might be that's asking. Well, I have a feeling it, she could probably get information however she needs to. Great. Nice job, Quentin, though. You seem to have done great on your marketing. <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> Can any of uh, I 
I'm. Do any of us have an auspicious nature? Perhaps we can sense something unseen. I am pretty sure I could be wrong. I don't think anyone took a. Oh no. Maybe I'm wrong. I apologize. I should have. Well, in that I have case. pros. I can't do everything. Oh, I have <laughs> I have sensed the beast. Uh, that my animalism, I uh, I can sense the beast present in mortals, vampires, and other supernaturals, gaining a sense of their nature. I mean, that's I feel like that's more. Uh, that would be like uh, whenever you know they were up in the club and they were trying to tell you know is this a human or a kindred then you would have been able to do that much mm. more easily. Uh, and you could sense the beast in Lilith was very unusual. Nothing even resembling any kindred that you've seen before. In, yeah. in kind of a, an unexpected way, it almost seemed like two different beasts. There was one thing that was interesting about her. Um, I mean, when she was there, you she's the only thing you could notice in the room. But more than that, it seemed like there was a duality to her essence. So that's where it comes from. Interesting. Greater power. Well, nothing will come of nothing, so perhaps we need to speak with her again. Um, I do. I have heightened senses. I don't know if that could be. It I just mean, says my senses sharpened, so I don't know if that would really help. Not, not in the way that Sam yeah. was implying. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because aspects would uh, would give you a little bit more of the. Um, uh, why I'm blanking on the word, uh, like clairvoyance, in a sense. Um, mm. Yeah. So no, no one, no one took that particular discipline. Uh oh. <laughs> so, out of out of game above table here, just for a second, uh, uh -huh. as I'm learning this. So, essentially, she could still be in this room, but we don't know she's in this room. Potentially, you're okay. not sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, for all you know, she could be doing what you had done upstairs, but maybe at a, right. a higher level. Uh, you would probably know. You may not have seen uh, what's called a Methuselah, which is a very, very old vampire. Uh, but you would have likely heard some stories, at least, of their powers being beyond anything that most kindred can do. Like... To the point that it even feels supernatural to you. Okay. Well, clearly, if we're going to help her, we need to talk to her and find her. We can't support what she's trying to do if we don't know where she is. <clears throat> Perhaps we need to do something to impress her, attract her attention in a positive manner. <clears throat> maybe, we, maybe we need to take out these Camarilla upstairs. Oh, you know I'm game for that. <laughs> there were only two. We have to be careful, though. We can't let the word get out. We have to do it quickly and in front of her and no one else. <sighs> yes, as much as I'd like to break the masquerade, the safety it provides is essential at this time. Perhaps there's a way we can turn their influence against them. Hmm. Establish how they're hunting on these grounds at the moment. And then out them as something hateful. Perhaps we can frame them as uh, nefarious uh, drug dealers or or something. So, maybe what we can do 
is i don't know inside some sort of riot and put them at the center of it make it seem like some wild beast or some vicious killer came through here i don't think i don't think well anyone would any one of the kindred would appreciate it if they broke the masquerade. Well, I'm sure that uh, the club would be down several points after such a tragedy. Um, we could Agreed. Uh, spin it in such a way that we get the sympathy of people to rebound in the future and uh, maybe increase our profits by 15% at the end of the day. <sighs> Those those margins look pretty good, if you ask me. I mean, we could just follow them, see what they're up to. Seems perfect. Probably wouldn't hurt to get a an idea of what they're doing before we make any moves that we can't take back. I can, check in out, I can check in outside with the uh, with the animals to see if there's but anything new in the area. It's not a bad idea. As you all are discussing this, you do see that those Camarilla individuals make their way down into the Elysium. <laughs> And there's two? Yes. Don't tell me one of them's standing right behind me, is that? <laughs> Fortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do for you? Oh, you're just going straight up to them? Oh, yeah. Uh, they just look at you up and down and say, who are you? Who are you? You come all the way to Istanbul, and you ask, who am I? I've been here. Who are you? Mm, I doubt that. What business is, what business of yours is it who I am? You're in Q's club. It's my understanding that this is neutral ground. Is it now? And they look to Q. Is it not? Why? Have you done something to make it not so? Hmm. You are guests here at the time being. I wouldn't dream of it. Then the question still stands, who are you? It's not important. We're here for her. Hmm. Her? Don't play coy. You know to whom I refer. You we say all this as if we are holding her. As if she can be contained. You know, it's not a matter of containment, but we were led to believe that she was here visiting. And if that's not the case, maybe we were mistaken. Maybe we'll come back another time. What do you want with her? What does any kindred want with her? She is the original, the first. Which means she comes to you when she mm. wants to. No, I don't believe that's how it works. When you have that much power and age, you don't have to go to anyone. They come to you. Well, I wish you luck in finding them. 
<laughs> and with that, the exit. Can you? Uh... I'm gonna slink into the shadows and follow them out. Okay. Be before you do that, I'll be like, "Can your ravens follow them?" Absolutely. We'll see in a little. And I'll. Uh... <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, so you follow them as they leave the club. And what is everyone else doing? Mm. I want to. I want to investigate for any like clues as to where she could have gone. I will let you know. There's nothing, nothing here, here that you could say like, "Oh, this is definitely where she went." Uh, anything that she could have done would not leave a trace. Hmm. Perhaps I could have, maybe someone saw which direction she came from when she came in. I, I don't know. Maybe like someone seeing her face, like I could ask around. Have you seen this? Have you seen this kindred? <laughs> have you seen this kindred? <laughs> a wanted poster at the post office. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an already, it's a milk bottle. It already has her face on it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get that so fast? As I uh, follow them out, can I pause for a second and look for uh, some some creature that's outside, whether it be a bird or a rat outside, something that I can co converse with for a moment? Sure. Uh, give pause me I'm watching them. Yeah, give me charisma and animal kin. And I I have feral whisper. I don't know what that does exactly, but I can commune with beasts of the wild in the city. Absolutely. So, so you're, you're kind okay. of our, our druid, essentially. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except I eat people. <laughs> <laughs> Druids could do that too. That's what wild shapes for, right? This, this is true. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, all right. So I'm rolling what now? Uh, charisma and animal kin. Three in charisma and one in that one. Now on my thing, it says manipulation and animalism or charisma and animalism. I don't know if I'm supposed mm. to do something different with Actually, that. Actually, yeah, but... you know, that's a good point. Um... It would give you a, a one dot bonus. So, yeah, go for it. Your call, so you're in fun. charge. I'm just eating people. <laughs> You've eaten so uh, many. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, that was three and two. Okay. Yep. So, three black, two red. Uh, a crit on the red, two crits on the black. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. A success on the red, two successes on the black. Much different. Yeah. I know what you meant. Uh, so that is five successes total. And yeah, you are able to find uh, there's like a, a raccoon that is just prowling in the alley looking for trash. All right. Um, hello, friend. Have you experienced a more extreme being than I recently. It just kind of tilts its head like a dog would at you. Does it not understand? <laughs> yeah, it seems confused. Um, Has there been a lot of traffic? A lot of people come by here. It nods its head. Anyone scarier than most? And it nods its head vigorously. Did you see where the scary one went? It just kind of shrugs. Uh, and you kind of get the sense uh, as fast as it can communicate that more or less she appeared. 
Okay. Was the scary one alone or with yeah. friends? Alone. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Not that helpful, but, and then I'm going to keep following because I can't be, I can't be lagging too far behind. So I'm going to keep following the others. Oh, you're following and not your crows. I was following. Yeah. Because my crows are still pissed at me right now. So I'm giving them a second. <laughs> That's fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah. So uh, you continue. Yeah. So I'll be talking people. to them. Like, you know, when I can, I'm like mm -hmm. whispering to them. You see, I don't have time for this shit. You should be doing this. This is how we support each other. You're supposed to be doing this shit. I feed you. You go follow people. I don't know what this attitude is about lately. You just get, as a response, you get an indignant caw. Ah! This is we're we're gonna have words about this later. <laughs> One of them kind of like pull your shit your... together. What is yeah, going one of them on today? Your hand. Go ahead, eat. <laughs> and we're going to cut back to the club what are the rest <laughs> of you doing as our uh, pursuer is pursuing hmm. perhaps we're going about this differently perhaps we need to bring more of the camera like here someone with a little more authority to meet with Lilith, because if Lilith isn't happy with the way things are going, mm -hmm. then perhaps they'll, she'll take care of a problem for us. Hmm. So I have a little bit of a, like, I'm a, you know, it wouldn't apply because I have like academics, but I have like a, a like a, a specialty, but it's in American history, and I don't think it's in American <laughs> history. <laughs> Strangely, American not relevant. history. Yeah. Um, Weirdly, despite what the American school system, as an American myself, <laughs> teaches us, uh, we are not relevant to the rest of world history uh -huh, uh -huh. fairly often. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, let's use <laughs> let's use teaches with air quotes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean. I also live in Missouri, so teaches is very much in air quotes. <laughs> um, hell, that's just not the worst idea. Um, should we? Maybe we should stay close behind Cass. In case how many dots? How many dots in academics do you have? I have in academics. I have one. But okay. when it comes to American history, um, it's five. Okay. Yeah. So unfortunately, it does not relate to American history. I wish, <laughs> I wish that I could help you there. Um, yeah. But if you wanted, I would let you give me intelligence plus academics uh, to see like what you might be able to recall that you might have learned about Lilith. Okay. Oh, hold or on. just even kindred history in general. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on, I'm just trying to. Okay, intelligence you said and um, academics. academics. Yep. Okay. Wait, that's the wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I have uh, of three, I have one success. Okay. Um. You, you don't recall very much you know it's that uh, lovely american school system for you uh also the fact that you know they don't teach a lot of kindred history typically even uh, once you are turned it just depends on your sire and where you're brought up and as a group of independents you probably wouldn't have as much of a structure to provide education like that uh so i mean you you would be familiar at least with the names Lilith and Cain and who they are. You may have heard of like the antediluvians, which are the very, very old, like second and third generation kindred, which they are the ones antediluvian, meaning before the flood. Uh, so mm -hmm. they are before the time of Noah. Uh, you would probably at least have an idea that 
Um, Cain is around 10,000 years old, and Lilith being older than that, uh, she's very ancient. Hmm. I mean, if this is the the premier place for Kendra to go, I don't know where else she would have gone. Would it be even reasonable to assume that she's left? Or, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sort of new to this whole thing. It's only been like 40 or 50 years. Like, like I was saying, we, we have to do something to attract her back. Get her attention. And well, as the three of you are conversing, uh, another kindred approaches and says, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, my name is Yusuf. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you uh, seem to be looking for Lilith. Man, everyone you've known before. What was that? <clears throat> uh, have I seen you around before? Oh, probably. I I'm here often. What, what is your interest here, truly? Uh, are you not here to just enjoy the festivities? Oh, of course. And uh, I, I've gathered that you are not a fan of the Camarilla, if I'm not mistaken. Dangerous words in dangerous times. Hmm. Well, to some. To some. But with her around, maybe a little less dangerous. Twice the danger, double the fall. Indeed. But sometimes you have to take risks. I'm sensing you want to form some sort of partnership. Perhaps I may be able to assist you. Then perhaps if our goals align. Oh, what might your goal be? Power, absolutely, of course. Oh, then I think we're on the same page. Well then, Yusuf, welcome to our little circle. Thank you. Yusuf, you said you could help us, right? So what can you do? I can tell you where you might find her. Hmm. And how accurate do you think your information is? Oh, it's quite accurate. <sighs> Very well. It just looks to the three of you and says, shall we? Somewhere a little more private. What about your friend? The other one? What other one? The one whose cloak screams occasionally. <laughs> oh, are you assuming that they left? I don't see them around. Of course you don't. <laughs> Nicely played. <laughs> well, then... Let me assume that whoever may be listening will know to follow as they raise That's their voice. My move. <laughs> <laughs> They're a keen <clean> observer. <laughs> so, uh, over the table, are any of you going to in any way try to contact Cass? Um, assuming Cass has a phone, could just send a yeah. text. I'm assuming we're texting. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a text chain. Yeah, right. given that you're independent, I think that that's much more likely. I know that sometimes the Camarilla is a little bit uh, hesitant to use more modern technology, uh, especially just knowing that 
things like the Second Inquisition can uh, trace calls and they're you know monitoring things. But oh yeah, we were using pagers and uh... they're all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, walkie talkies. <laughs> Yeah. Just like a, a series of like codes, and like we've got yeah. maybe like fifty different codes. <laughs> I just use uh like text speech, but from like the early two thousands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I only speak in emojis. Yeah, <laughs> I, I imagine Jed like probably emojis. has to. I'm sorry, <laughs> Greta just sounds like all leak speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fully. For I imagine, actually, it's just uwu speak. And so, like, they, it, it just, no one ever, like, breaks it because they read, like, two words in and they're like, I can't do this. Yeah, they're like, no, I'm out, I'm out. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Jed, Jed probably has, like, an old, like, flip phone and he, like, uses T9 chat and only responds in, like, one word answers. <laughs> like, <course>. okay. <laughs> but only after, like, 9 p.m. whenever your minutes are free. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it's like oh all night uh, <laughs> yeah he's the weekend, true. yeah true. <laughs> he, he's That's like true. Getting, yeah he gets messages and he's like what what does what does this mean and it's just like <laughs> random it's like no cap i i don't usually wear a cap <laughs> i wear a hat <laughs> Yeah, you just get like FR, FR. You're like, I don't know what this means. <laughs> free <ASL>? What? <laughs> American yeah, Sign Language. Free rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cass, as you are attempting to uh, stealthily follow, I will need mm -hmm. a stealth roll this time. So, uh, Dex Stealth, please. Okay, and so my hit unseen passage thing doesn't help me at all on here. It does. They can't see you. It's a matter of can they hear you or smell you. It says as long as the user admits no overpowering odors and no sound louder than a whisper, this power automatically works. Yeah. So, so I mean, am I rolling for crows? <laughs> partially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what, what am I rolling here? Uh, dexterity plus stealth. stealth. That's not a good, that's not good. I don't like that. <laughs> the lesser known remake, Silence of the Crows. I feel like I should be better at this with all right? of my stuff. I'm like, I clearly did not pick my stats correctly. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everybody um, for social skills, except for Jed. <laughs> yeah, well, mm -hmm. I thought I was doing it correctly but i apparently did not uh yeah, a, so i got i got a uh a pass on the black i got a very angry skull on the red uh oh just one mm -hmm. just one okay so yeah you're, you're good on that um okay yeah you are able to mostly stay kind of quiet but the crows are they're not cawing but they're rustling they're mm -hmm. restless mm -hmm. Uh, and that just throws you off just enough that you do make a little bit of sound occasionally uh, that you think could possibly give away your location. And okay. it does seem like they're a little bit more wary. Uh, they're kind of looking over their shoulder occasionally. It doesn't seem like they've noticed you. They haven't clocked exactly where you are, but they're suspicious that someone is following Okay. I'm going to kind of like duck, duck behind a tree and I'm going to be like, all right, this is it. This is go time. Get your ass up up there and, and watch. And I'm going to send, I'm going to send them over to fly overhead, um, sure. you know, with, with them, but I'm also going to stay behind yeah. and follow for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And as, as so you... I'm mostly using them to like, in this case, I know that they're pissed off and they're going to be angsty and making noise and whatever. And I, I want the people to assume that it's the crows that's, and not, and then stop paying attention to me, essentially, is sure. what I'm doing. Yeah. And as you duck behind this tree to do this, you feel your phone vibrate. Okay. I'm going to look at it. And what would, what would Greta have sent uh, in Uwu code? 
Um, it basically would have been uh, the translated version, because uh, I'm not about to do that. <laughs> is, um... Oh, come on. I tried. I tried. No, I was all for it. <laughs> um, basically, like, uh, potential ally uh, says he knows where Lilith is. Uh, heading there now, um, meet up, and then, like, some coordinates or, like, kind of, like, a general, like, idea of where we're going. I'm not going to, like, drop a location or anything, just in case, right. but, yeah. And what Cass would have gotten as far as location is the sewers. Okay. Uh, I will text back a... Uh, Angry face emoji. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little... And... Sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, uh, if you know that, like, guess I'll die meme, that's the response <laughs> to the angry face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to respond with a puke emoji and um, and then, like, just dot, dot, dot. I love that our code here is a combination of late speak, ooh woo, emoji, <laughs> and gifts. Mm -hmm. Great. I look at Q and I pull out my phone and I'm just, I just got like a bunch of like boxes. I'm like, why do they keep texting me boxes? <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. I love it. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can tell I, that our, our kindred are definitely of a certain age group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no uh, wonder, so I, five versions ago. <laughs> <laughs> five versions of the flip phone, yeah. <laughs> so I will, um, me and my and one of my crows, because all the rest of them are, are gone, um, I will head to where they're at. Okay. So you make your way to where they kind of described, uh, which mm -hmm. for the rest of you, uh, Yusuf leads you to a manhole cover behind the club. Lifts it up and says, please, after you. To, to us? Mm -hmm. I, uh, can I do, can I use my, can I sense the beast in this guy? Oh, he's definitely kindred. Definitely kindred. Do I? Um, mm. Can Can I also like? I, I want to like sort of insight him and see if there's any like nefariousness going on in this moment as to because I just got I got skeeved out by the <laughs> after you, you know. <laughs> it's been a little it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> stated in quite that way. It was just uh, a very casual after you. Oh, okay. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> Yeah, nothing, nothing seems sus about it. Okay. Other than the fact that, you know, it's a, a sewer that you're being led yeah. into. But... <laughs> right. Led but first. Also, you're, you're kindred, so the sewers are not that unusual. Yeah. Usually I don't go into an unmarked vehicle or the sewers without at least a king-sized candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just shrugs and says... Seem to be fresh out. I'll jump in first. <laughs> Are you just jumping straight down? Just, uh, well, it's probably going to be a little bit. I'll, I'll take the ladder. Okay. <laughs> as dramatic as I want to be, live my Kate Beckinsale like. <laughs> <clears throat> I will. I will climb down. I mean, now I just want you to do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> just we'll leave that to Cass. Was like spin in a circle. Down we go. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave that to Cass with her cloak. <laughs> um, yeah, about this time you're gonna get a a running man emoji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, making your way into the sewer, it seems right. pretty normal. Like nothing seems off as you're down there. I, I can't imagine that Q probably spends a lot of time in the sewers, but you've probably known at least a few Nosferatu who live there. Q 
inconvenient people. Yes. <laughs> um, I will. I will hand Yusuf uh, a small piece of paper. Oh, okay. Uh, it is uh, yellow, like a like a carbon copy. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the receipt for dry cleaning. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> he just tucks it into his shirt pocket and says, "Okay." Just business expense it, you know? Absolutely. Write it off. I, I don't pay taxes anymore. On all the taxes you pay. <laughs> I don't, but I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> what about Greta and Judd? Greta's going down, but very slowly, and making a lot of comments about how these are new shoes. Um, <laughs> but she is going down there. Conveniently it, did not have a, a receipt for dry cleaning. No, no. <laughs> Very much like comes down and is like trying to like find something to wipe her hands off of from the ladder. But like <laughs> the only thing nearby is Q and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Jed's probably not too grossed out as he comes down. You know, he's used to shoveling shit. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, the, the moment Jed gets down, least... Greta's like. <laughs> on your back <laughs> like, just... <laughs> probably didn't even notice yeah <laughs> yeah so as you all make your way down Yusuf begins to lead you through the tunnels and after several twists and turns you find that there is a section where the wall seems to have been demolished and inside of this large person-sized hole, you can see a different form of architecture. Very old-looking architecture. And inside of this hallway, you see it is lined with human skulls and femurs, all kinds of other bones as he leads you into the catacombs. Hmm. Now, Cass, you would not be able to get the exact directions from here. So you make your way down into the sewers. Where would you be going? Because you would not know. They wouldn't be able to text you anymore. Uh, could I smell? Can I use any sense of... I can smell blood, but... Do we have blood? Like, what I does that you work do? For yeah, us? that that is like the the whole rouse check I, uh, is is literally the blood that you have fed upon is what keeps you okay. going. So you all do have blood. It's not yours. So I have, I have bloodhound, but it's I think it's specific to humans blood. blood so that's why I was asking. Hmm. Can smell the resonance of a human's blood without tasting it. Gotcha. Yeah. So that lets you know what kind of blood they have. Um, but you okay. know what? I would say because you are a pursuer and because you do have that, um, yeah, you. I'd also are... just look for their footprints and you know I, I, my normal scouting. I I would think too that Cass is used to going in and out of the sewers because she's constantly having to trail people and all that kind of stuff. So I would think sure. I would be somewhat familiar with it in some way. So I would, yeah, I would I would guesstimate where they would go and kind of be looking for that. Well, I was going to ask uh, the rest of the party, since you are a relatively established coterie, would you all have done anything to indicate where you have gone? You know, you can't send a text now that you're underground, but would you have done anything else to try to leave a sign in some way? I would like to propose that perhaps because of Jed's uh, unusual bovine blood fetish maybe that <laughs> calf, like, trained like to like smell cow blood yeah i would i would allow that uh Cass, oh. please give mm -hmm. me a wits awareness roll and i'm gonna give you a bonus die for your bloodhound oh nice uh all right awareness you have like a little flask of just like <laughs> Uh, which one is awareness under? No, I got it. Uh, it's under. Uh, so three, six. So I get to roll seven. Hell yeah. yeah. All 
All right, so bonus. See, we need to get Cass into the social situation so you can use that manipulation and roll a lot. I was trying. <laughs> All right, so I on the the red I have a, a success and a fail. Okay. Um, the and then I have uh, one two on the black. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So with three success. Oh, actually, one of those is a crit too. On the black, one is a crit. Okay, if it's only one, you have to have two for it to be a, a true crit. Okay. I still won't remember that, so I'll say that's it okay. the next time, too. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so with three successes, it's a little tricky, um, but you are able to follow. It's mostly tricky because there's a lot of other unpleasant smells, but you are able to eventually follow, and uh, because they're not necessarily in any hurry and you can go a little bit more quickly uh, while tracking, you are able to eventually catch up to the rest of your coterie and Yusuf. Cool. Cool. And do you pass along anything that you learn or observed? Yeah, except I don't know what I learned or observed because we, I mean, we just, you, I just you, saw them walking, them. right? Too. Yeah, you follow, like yeah. you didn't really learn a whole lot other than you know they were making sure that they weren't being followed and that they were leaving you don't know exactly to where you weren't able to follow them quite long enough for that but okay yeah so i would just relay how far also you did where talk i to, left them you did talk to the raccoon oh this is true this is true um yeah so the uh not too successful out there but the uh the raccoon definitely caught Lilith coming in and out uh, alone. Nobody else with her. Just appeared. Didn't walk in. Didn't walk out. Just appeared. And uh, I left the other friends over at Joe's Cafe. That's about where I where I dropped them before I didn't grab a bite and came Joe's chasing Cafe you. In Istanbul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's spelled completely differently than you think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So what's going on? Who's this guy? Yusuf. Would you like to introduce yourself? He just kind of glances over his shoulder and waves and says, I'm Yusuf. Cass. A pleasure. Shall we continue? I... Do I know who Yusuf is? Probably not, because no one else really did. Okay. It's kind of a, a person who seems... I'm texting. To... Oh. I'm going to text like like five things before I realize the text isn't going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Basically think... just like WTF. You know. Who would be good guy, bad at, guy? <laughs> who would be at the back of the party? I would think me because I don't really know what's going on and I want to kind of watch and maybe also yeah. slip into the shadows when nobody's looking. Which makes it even better because then like no one else even realizes you're trying to text and can't. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so eventually. Yusuf leads you to where this catacombs opens up. Uh, it appears to be almost a cathedral made of human bones. And says, she'll see you now. And you can see at the far end of the room, there is what appears to be something akin to a throne and lounged in the most bisexual way possible. <laughs> you see Lilith. At least Jed would recognize her. The others, you can you can again tell that there is a supernatural aura to her, but you haven't seen her before. Cass is gonna immediately just like I'm like on point. I'm standing up as straight as I possibly can. I've made sure that like there's not a speck of dirt on me. I'm you know kind of just doing the whole presenting 
being ready, super observant, and ultra focused. Absolutely. Ditto. <laughs> Definitely glad I wiped my hands off on Jed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I had a handkerchief, right? <laughs> You live and learn. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm just trying to remember any sort of uh, like symbolism that may be associated with Lilith, and if there's maybe an appropriate offering we could make here, whether it's words or a small token. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Why don't you give me? And academics and intelligence. Um, as an aside, there is in Turkey a place called Joe Plus Coffee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just looked it up. <laughs> Thank that you. I appreciate fantastic. the support. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A one success. Okay. Um, you know that being as old as she is, uh, you may not know the exact correct kind of offerings that would most please her, but uh, any kind of genuflection would probably behoove you. Uh, that basically being as submissive and open to whatever she has to say would be a good thing in this kind of approach to her. I'm going to also have my crow, Stanley, is going to come up onto my shoulder. He's going to, and I'm just going to, you need to be on your best, I'm whispering, you need to be on your best behavior. <laughs> And I'm going to walk kind of confident, but also with my head down just like a little bit. And I'm just going to walk over as close as, I don't know, it depends on who else is there in front of her. Uh, I don't want to get, you know, invade the space kind of thing. And I'm going to just kind of bow and go down to one knee and then just look up at her. And there is no one else here aside from the four of you and Yusuf. Okay, so I, pr I probably would go about eight feet or so and do that. Absolutely. What about the rest of you? Hmm. Sounds like a follow the leader type moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I would follow suit as well, or at least, like, you know, look very, um, I don't remember the word I'm looking for, <laughs> so we're going to so pretend reverend? I stopped talking. Yeah, yes, gonna... reverend is good. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tilt the hat, I'll be like, I knew we'd run into each other again, and tilt the hat. So everyone else goes down on one knee except for Jen, which is fantastic. I love this. And she just smirks and says, I didn't expect to see you again. Making very intense eye contact with Jed. Um, honestly, the pleasure is all mine. Um, and uh, I, I would like to apologize if I seemed uncouth on our first meeting. I just... Uh, I perhaps I was a fool to be concerned that others might find your presence uh, threatening and want to do something to harm you, but it seems you can hold your own, and I was a fool for assuming otherwise. And, and then I'll, I'll take a knee. Uh, she smiles even wider and says, the pleasure is indeed all yours. And Greta. <laughs> As this interaction is going on, you hear like a whisper in the back of your mind. And at first, it's too quiet, too faint to make out what's being said. But then you hear 
she lies. I'm gonna try not to make it seem like I heard anything. Um, but definitely take note of that. What the? <laughs> uh, um, Just more questions, that's it. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I, like, is, is, like, hearing voices in your head, like, a... It's not a normal thing. I, I would assume it's not a normal thing. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, it, it can happen. It is yeah. not unheard of. Mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely seems unusual uh, at this point in time. Cool. Um, can I roll like an occult or something to figure out? Absolutely. Like to see if I know. Yeah. Ooh, occult. Yes. Yeah. Uh, give me intelligence and occult. Okay. There it is. That is several. Actually, give me a give me a wits and a cult in this case. Okay. Ooh, that's better. <laughs> that gives me six die I can roll. <laughs> I, uh... And that is three successes. Okay. So you don't recognize the voice, mm -hmm. but something about it feels familiar. Feels familiar in the way that you think it's probably telling the truth for one, uh, and something that might connect kindred together in some form or fashion. You feel like a, a bond with it. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely take note of that. I'm not going to say anything right now, obviously. Right. Like <laughs> <laughs> and what are the rest of you doing? I would have stood up after Jed started talking. Okay. Um, you know, probably towards the end of it. Like, I don't need to stay down here for this whole thing kind of deal. <laughs> um, and would have would have stood up. Um, and then I think I would speak. They're okay. looking for you. Who is looking for me? The Camarilla. Oh, they have already found me. They know where I am. We've spoken. That's interesting because it's different than what I just observed. And what did you observe? Great tell. That they were looking for you. Hmm. Maybe you misheard. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's more that they were not sure if she's legit. Okay. Okay, then I wouldn't have said that then. Um, or, or, you know, maybe you were just feeling it out to see her response. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you don't you don't want to play all your cards at once. Yeah. Or do you? That's true. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Wild card. Maybe we've got the royal <laughs> flush, and we've just been waiting to dish it out there. <laughs> right. And Q, while Cass is having this conversation, you also hear a whisper in the back <clears throat> of your mind, saying, "She's pretender." Um, I'll look around, uh, I'll look to Jed and to Greta. What? What? 
Who's a pretender? I'll, I'll... What are you talking about? What? What are you talking about? You know she could see us, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to kind of give Q a look of like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've all seen that look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you? What is your interest with us? Oh, I believe you're the ones who sought me out, not the other way around. We did. And what might be your interest in seeking out myself? Why would someone not be interested? Indeed, that is the question. Mm. And... How do you think I might be useful to you? I would think that you could teach us. And she just nods, seemingly liking your response. And what might it be that you wish for me to teach? Power. And her smile just grows with that and says, that I can manage. How long do you intend to stay? Hmm. As long as it takes. And what is your goal? Oh, I wouldn't. Worry yourself with my goals. There is only one goal. Obviously to reclaim our rightful place. I like it. And then I say nothing else. What about the rest of you? Hmm. That's really quite ambitious. I mean... You don't think things have changed a little bit since the last time you were around? I mean, granted, they're all a bunch of meat puppets out there, wandering about, <clears throat> living their lives, going day to day to their jobs. Hell, I've got dozens of them under my employ. But I'll tell you something. They outnumber us more than you could ever know. Their technology... It's grown quite a lot since the last time you've walked the earth. And as <clears throat> your your statement, she again seems to almost disappear and reappear in front of you and just kind of caresses your face and says, I fear neither mortal nor immortal. And if you serve me, you need not fear them either. Forgive us, O oh we that are young. We have never seen as much, nor have lived as long as you. At least you're aware of that. Not all so young have so much wisdom. What is it that we can do for you, then? And Jed, as Q is having this conversation, you also hear a whisper. Uh, it, actually, you and Cass both simultaneously saying, come to me. And you feel almost like a, a pull. Towards where? Like a pull? Yeah. Like, uh, is, it, is it just like a general pull? Or is it a like pulling, a more <laughs> pulling like back out where you came from? Do I still have like I still have faculties and all that stuff? Like I'm not being 
I still have control of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're not being like physically pulled or even mm -hmm. like forced in some way to move, but you feel something almost pulling. All four of you can feel this, but only two of you heard the whisper. It's like something is guiding you almost. And, Away from her, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And Q, yeah. she, she responds, well, I always need those who go out in the world and spread the good word. I'll be right back and I'm going to vanish. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to walk towards where it's telling me to go. Mm -hmm. But be also very conscious of if I feel a stronger urge and start to lose control as I'm going towards it, I'm going to immediately stop and back up. But otherwise, I'm I'm going towards. I want to see what's out there. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're losing control of anything. It's just something urging you on, and it continues to pull. Like if you follow it, it would continue to pull down through the sewers. I'm following it. Okay. What about the rest I'm, of you? I, I'm going to tell uh, Stanley, wait here. Okay. Right at the right at the edge of the entrance. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Spread the good word that you have returned. I'm, I'm confused. Don't we want Absolutely. to maintain the masquerade? The masquerade. What is this foolishness you speak? Well, with the advancement in mortal technology in the past even uh, hundred years, the destructive capabilities have increased exponentially. Um, I mean, and I'll like start going on to a tangent about American history, starting from like, <laughs> uh, starting from like, you know, the the biological warfare of the Civil War, where they used, you know, like, um, you know, they kept their bullets near the latrine because they would infect the other guys, or and then like how they like employed the use of mustard gas in World War One, and, and all the way to the as, nuclear. As you begin to go on this tangent. She just puts a finger over your lips and says, shh, that's unnecessary. I think I get the point. Well, a lot of these families have a vested interest in maintaining the facade. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? And how about you? And uh, your friend, who seems to have disappeared. I would think too, because we we are together, that you you all would know when I vanish. It's because I'm like, oh shit, something's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely would have picked up on that because like it would have oh. happened pretty much at the same time that I felt the the, the pull too. The nature of the beast allow her to do as uh, is is natural to to a being such as our friend there. Uh, disappearing, coming and going is simply as easy as it is for us to um, drink and <laughs> not breathe. And she says, hmm, interesting. Okay. I suppose that's fine. And you all start to, to notice that she's seemingly getting a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, the calm, cool demeanor that she had initially almost seems like it's starting to crack a little bit. Um, I don't know if this would do anything at this point, because um, it's it's a little confusing the way it's worded. Um, <laughs> but so I have like a reveal temperament as a power. Okay. Um, so I know it says like 
Sorry, there's a bug. Uh... <laughs> Weird that it would say that. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> the crow. Um, versus a vampire uh, for the roles, uh, a win reveals the resonance of the last mortal they fed upon, and a critical win provides, like, a picture of the, a nuanced vic- picture of the vessel at the time of feeding, revealing the method and predator type of the vampire. So I don't know if that's anything that would actually be useful or not, but... Possibly, actually. Let me... Okay. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, so... Oh, uh, slight issue. Mm. Um, it requires... Oh, no, just kidding. You do have boss picks, uh, mm-hmm. but you don't have the, the correct one. Um, yeah, so give me intelligence uh, plus auspex. Okay. So three dice. Yes. Cool. Um... Uh, it's one success, two failures. Okay. Um, you get the sense that what was fed upon mm-hmm. uh, is potentially more ancient than the person standing before you. Mm. <laughs> okay. And I think, especially Q, because you know we we've kind of established you have a little bit of a little bit possibly of kindred history knowledge. Uh, I mean, you would probably have heard about Diablerie, uh, the feeding on of older generation vampires in order to increase your own power. And so, hypothetically, if someone were to feed on, say, an antediluvian, uh, which would include Cain or Lilith, that they could potentially acquire a portion, if not all, of their power. Yep. <laughs> so at this point she says you know where to find me I think it best that you go and spread the gospel as it were bring others Onto the fold. I'll I'll tilt my head and do the hat thing, um, but I won't say anything. Okay. What about Greta and Q? Greta's going to nod and just kind of say, like, um, I think we can get started on that for sure. Uh, Greta, (laughs) now is your time. (laughs) (laughs) Give me a charisma and manipulation roll, please. Yes, like gatekeep girl boss. It's gonna be um four successes and two failures. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh you are able to you feel pretty confident that you did not give away uh your, your bullshit that you're <laughs> viewing at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you feel like you have definitely gaslit her a little bit. Maybe the I... gatekeeper. The girl boss is, is iffy, but... Well, we're getting three. there. Yeah, two out of three. Thank you. 
Hmm. Uh, I'll take a I'll take a moment and just kind of uh, as I'm listening to my allies give their counsel. Um, and I'm not feeling any sort of like coercion or presence other than just like the uh, other than just Lilith or this this being themselves. Coercion in what way? Like. In I guess in my way I'm getting suspicious of like uh, like being a siren um, and being able to manipulate people the way that I do. Do I feel like her words are maybe honeyed or if she yeah. is offering us a place in her order? Yeah, I I won't even make you roll for that because you make a good point. Yeah, as as a siren, you know your craft. And you get, now that the, the awe is starting to wear off a little bit, and you're starting to see the flaws, you're starting to realize that she was playing a very similar game. Um, to that, then I would uh, just kind of dig within myself. Um, using uh, like a meditative state to just try and continue to resist whatever she may be putting down, but also putting forth a, a very respectful and courteous, like, uh, I appreciate the audience. Yeah, give me, uh, let's do manipulation and etiquette. Oh boy. Yeah, giving you the best of what you mm -hmm. got. <laughs> you got this. Guidance. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. One, two, three, four successes. Yeah. Uh, you, you are able to keep your cool, uh, you know, properly genuflect uh, to keep up the masquerade of this sort uh, and doesn't seem like she suspects anything untoward. Uh, and then try to leave and follow, well, not really follow because we can't follow cast the way traditional methods would take. Sure, but follow the poll. But wait, wait for a sign. Absolutely. So uh, as you begin to exit, uh, essentially following where you assume that Cass would have gone, you also are feeling this pull. And it, it gets stronger the further along you go, the more you follow it. And eventually, uh, you wouldn't see, but Cass, you would be able to hear your coterie starting to catch up a little bit. And are you making yourself known at this point, or are you going to continue to hide? Well, what did I find when I went down this hallway? Nothing yet. It just is still kind of pulling. I wouldn't have stopped. I would have kept going towards the pull. Sure. So yeah. as the four of you, uh, not knowing where Cass is necessarily, but the four of you follow this pull, you find that this leads into... Uh, uh, there's a ladder that leads up and as you exit uh, there is a sign for a museum a natural history museum and as it is quite late the museum is not open I would have looked for a way to get in okay you are able to find that there is a side door you could potentially use. Uh, it is locked. And you can assume that it is probably guarded. Okay. Uh, can I look around to see if there's any other ways to get in? 
nothing that is unlocked, and it seems like the guards patrol, as best you can tell. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, my character has to do, like, like crazy shit and take chances, so I think this is where that would come into play, and I would... <laughs> I'm still invisible on going through this, so I think I would would try to pick the lock. Yeah, uh, so that would be... Or break it. Am I strong enough to just break it? Potentially. Uh, I mean, realistically, it's going to be the same amount of dice that you're rolling either way. Uh, but actually, you know... Breaking it looks cooler, so we're going to do that. Yeah. Um, so as... as so I just squeeze the, it. Yeah. As the rest of the coterie uh, is getting to the same place where Cass is currently, because it's going to make a little bit of noise, you know, even though you're just squeezing it, it's going to make enough noise that you become noticeable. Uh, you all see that Cass is currently trying to force entry into this museum. Uh... About this time, all of you are getting all the texts that I sent earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just absolutely vibrating all your pockets. Yeah. <clears throat> angry angry emojis and WTF. It's okay, this Nokia can take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you said I rolled the same amount of dice. So what am I rolling? Uh, I mean... Because you're not really under pressure right now, I'm not going to have you roll. You are able to okay. force entry. Uh, the only issue that you can think of, uh, because you do have a, a decent amount of streetwise, um, mm -hmm. is that there could be like a silent alarm that you might not know. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you don't hear anything. You don't see any kind of response currently. But you do yeah. see the rest of your uh, coterie cod has caught up to you. I have a, I don't know if this works, but I have a, in my background, I have a contact who, um, a human contact who works for the police force. Okay. Could I, could I send a text to that person and just be like, sorry about the history museum, a little help? <laughs> uh, so over the table, help in what way? Uh, this is me, like, I'm about to cause some shit, cover my stuff up when you get here. Okay. That's what I figured, yeah. but I just wanted to, to make sure. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? Give me uh, charisma and then an extra dice for your contact. Is there a, is there a way, you're because you're trying to get into this place, right? Like, I mean, we're, we're... She's, able to, she's able to break in. Like, is there a way I have like obfuscate as like a an ability? I think I can I can silence it's the user, which is me. I can nullify all sound, maybe. But I don't know if I think that just only applies to me. Never mind. I mean, a for effort. <laughs> what am I rolling? Mm -hmm. Charisma at what? Uh, plus an extra die for your contact, so four. But just charisma, or yep. I thought you said something. Yeah, yeah. The extra die is for your contact. Got you, got you. All right. So two and two, two red, two black. Ooh, a crit on the red, and also the scary skull, and then <laughs> two, two successes on the black. Okay, so three successes total. Uh, you don't get a response right away, but that's not unusual for this contact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I would, uh, knowing that they're going to come check out the door, I'm just moving as swiftly as I can away from the door, but also towards, like, where this call is coming from. Sure. Are the rest of you following as well? Yeah. Okay. So as the four of you follow this pull that you're feeling, uh, you are led to an exhibit from ancient Mesopotamia. You see that there is uh, some sort of 
almost like sarcophagus. And it looks like it has been tampered with. I'm going to lift it to see if there's anybody in it. So as you do, you can see that inside there is a desiccated corpse. It is almost skeletal at this point with an ornate stake through its heart. And because it is so dried out, uh, you can see that it has very pronounced canine teeth. I'm going to pocket the steak. And do I see anything else? You, you pull the steak out? Yep. I have to. I'm chaos demon. Perfect. As you do, this desiccated <laughs> It's literally corpse, one of the things I picked. <laughs> this desiccated corpse begins to shift. You see skin and musculature begin to regrow. And before you raise <laughs> the body of an absolutely stunningly gorgeous woman, completely naked in here, you know, she was buried this way, uh, and she just sits up and looks at you, and her eyes are black and unnerving, and says, Well, hello. Where, where am I? When, I, when are you is probably a better question. Uh, you're in a history museum. Do I know, is there anything inside the sarcophagus that I would have seen, like what it, who this is that I've raised at this point? Uh, I mean, if you had looked, which we can, we can retroactively say you would have looked at like the display, uh, it just says unknown person. Uh, they, they don't have any idea uh, but they seem to have mm -hmm. been like, according to these historians, maybe ritually sacrificed. Okay. So I'm Cass. Who might you be? I believe you would call me Lilith. <sighs> well, that's interesting. Can I sense the beast in this individual? Oh, you absolutely can. Uh, what Should I roll you... resolve and animalism? Which yeah. is yeah, I mean, you you sense uh, without even rolling, but yeah, go ahead and roll. Uh, you sense a very familiar feeling to what you had sensed previously. Similar. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. What were your results? My results are, I have no successes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you, you don't get a good sense uh, other than this is old and powerful. And it reminds you of what you had sensed in the one who called herself Lilith before. Beyond that, you're not really sure. Okay. I'm going to take her hand and help her out of this thing that she's in. I have a sick yeah. cowboy duster. I'll offer it to her. She says, I need to feed. Well, I'm not going to be able to help with that, but we can, we can find you something. I'll sniff the air. Does it smell like there's any uh, mall cops nearby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like there are any guards who are coming around. I will let you all know because most of you are new to vampire. Uh, vampires can feed on other vampires. That is a oh. thing. So she could feed on any of you if she so chose. And that uh, yes, my question. Does she have recent looking marks on her neck? She does. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I'll step forward. Oh, you're perhaps hungry because someone fed on you recently. 
And with that, she kind of feels her neck and, well, it would seem someone has already beaten you here. So I'll go like, and I'll just offer up. Uh, as as just soon as you, you know, do like the just hair Just a little. Yeah, as soon as you do like the hair flip, she pounces. Like she moves supernaturally fast and mm -hmm. just absolutely sinks her teeth in and begins draining you. To the point you feel like you are very, very close to the final death. Like you feel like you are about to be consumed entirely. Can and I do pulls... anything while I do this? No. Okay. Uh, it, so while you feel this, uh, the, the kiss is what Kindred call feeding. Uh, mm -hmm. It is better than drugs. It's better than sex. It's better than all of them combined. It's a, an amazing feeling as you're being fed on by her. So as you're about to die, uh, you feel fantastic. Uh, but, you know, obviously terrified because for Kindred, the final death, there's not really a way to come back from. At least not that you know of. And she pulls away at the last second. Absolutely just dripping with blood. And says, I just fall now. to the ground. Now. What are you all prepared to do for me? I don't know about you guys, but it seems like she's the real deal. Perhaps, you know, Q, I know you have some pretty ambitious goals. Um, Greta, Cass, uh, Cass, I mean, this is the person you've been looking for, isn't it not? And, I'm and just Greta. like, just <laughs> glazed with yeah. What looks like a smile, if I would smile, you know. And I a don't, smile. I don't respond. I have no words at this point. Yeah. I'm still just laying there and in, in glory. And Jed, as you're saying, she seems to be the real deal. Uh, any of you who would be looking at her or in her general direction see that from her back, two leathery wings begin to emerge from her forehead. Two curved horns sprout, and her fingernails become horrible claws. And she says, shall we? As you planned. Perhaps we and should start with the person who uh, disturbed your slumber. I think that's an excellent plan. I think that's a good place for us to end this one shot uh, because you won't have met with the true Lilith, exposed the uh, pretender, and uh, now we're off to potentially. I don't know. What, what would you all do at this point? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, think... yeah, I think. Let, let's go, let's go around and say uh, we'll, we'll start with Jed. What would Jed's wish be here, uh, as this is, you know, your make a wish moment? Uh, I think mainly, uh, I think the the Camarilla were definitely sort of inhibiting what a kindred could accomplish in their life by maintaining the masquerade. I think um, Jed and the other, uh, any other of the, the Banu Hakim would totally be for, you know, a regime change in the world. Um, and like would have helped orchestrate that. Um, I think that would be well within his, uh, his goals and aspirations for this moment that he encountered. Yeah, absolutely. What about Cass? Uh, Cass is just all up in it. She she's in her glory. She's um, doing everything she can to be the 
right hand, so to speak. And uh, yeah, she's just loving every second of it. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh yeah, uh, in enraptured in this moment, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. with like the pangs of like some humanity calling to him, like help your friend, she's dying, <laughs> <laughs> like real, real, <laughs> um, like yeah, uh, ready to commit to this. Absolutely, and Greta. Yeah. Um... I think Greta's pretty much with everyone else, like, very, like, God, she's amazing. Uh, And, like, is gonna definitely, like, uh, commit to, like, helping with resume changes and everything like that, while also trying to, like, increase her own personal, like, fame and, like, things like that. Definitely, like, for the team, but also a little bit for me. Yeah. As a treat. I I love the mental image that I have of like, you know, Lilith is sprouting these wings and horns and then you see Greta off to the side like taking a selfie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fully like. <laughs> she is <with> <laughs> uh, That is amazing. Well, thank you all for coming and playing. It's been a blast uh, getting to tell the story with all of you and getting to play with all of you for the first time. Uh, so, why don't we go around and say one more time who everyone is, where we can find you, and uh, anything that you want to plug. So uh, why don't we start with Link? Uh, yeah, I'm Link, uh, Ghostly Reverb on all social medias, um, including here on Twitch, which I'm going to be starting to stream uh, probably tomorrow uh, with some like Let's Plays and then also like chatting, stuff like that. So yeah, check it out. Fantastic. Shana. Yeah. So uh, first, let me just say thank you. This was a blast. Um, I, it's my first time playing Vampire the Masquerade, and it was <laughs> a, a pleasure uh, to have you as a GM on, on this journey and playing with the, all of you. It was a lot of fun. Um, you can find me uh all my links are at imaginef.shop and there's no E in imagine. So it's I M A G I N I F dot shop. Um, I'm pretty much imagine if everywhere you can find me on socials on Twitch. I just started a new Twitch channel, imagine if media, uh, where we create play and heal on there. Um, I am a, uh, certified personal coach, uh, and witch as well. So I do a lot of uh, healing stuff, and I do a lot of uh, play for healing as well. Um, and we just started a creator spotlight. So if you are a creator, uh, TGRPG player, um, artist, writer, any of that kind of stuff, and you want to be on the show, I would love to have you. The links are also in that same imagineif.shop. And yeah, thank you. Fantastic. And yeah, what a what a way to start. You get to meet Lilith in your first time playing, and now... <laughs> I fed Lilith. Yeah, yeah. We care yeah. about it. I fed. Go bigger, Lilith. go home. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah, oh, I'm, fantastic. Yeah. I'm ready for the series. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and freedom. Yeah, um, my name is Freedom. I'm the Thunder Wizard Ten or Thunder Wizard Ten on Instagram. You can go to my link tree. Um, link tree. Thunder Wizard. Um, I make terrain right now. I have a sale going on 10% off all terrain for a uh, coupon code Thunder Tunnel 10. And you get a free set of mystery dice, free set of mystery dice with that as well. Um, and this Thursday, um, I'll be streaming with my co host Connor um, on our show, Total Party Paint. Um, and also, you guys are so awesome. I had a blast playing. This is my first time playing this game as well um it was it was spooky silly uh (laughs) scary and all the other s adjectives that i could think of to describe this um (laughs) no for real you guys are so much fun thanks for having me and um yeah look forward to any uh look forward to watching everyone's stuff on the internet yeah, and I, I'm glad to hear that. Those are the things that I aim for when I run World of Darkness. Uh, it has kind of a, a reputation for being edgy and dark and nothing else sometimes. And I like to have a little bit of fun. And yeah, 
sexy, <laughs> spooky, all the stuff. So, all Better right. Sticky. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes it gets a little sticky. Sometimes. But... To be fair, Greta started as the sticky one, and then Jed became the sticky one when, <laughs> you know, walking through the sewer. Yep. Absolutely. All right. And last but not least, Sam. Yeah, um, um, yeah, echoing everyone's sentiments here. Thank you so much uh, for an incredible game. Um, every time I've played uh, in uh, the World of Darkness and Vampire, I have been spoiled. And uh, thank you so much for continuing that trend, all of you. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was a blast to play Q and um, uh, Lilith and all the Lilithness uh, around Lily Lilith stuff yeah <laughs> wow uh i'm still how many times can we say incredible so yeah uh I'm, I'm sam uh you can find me on fable mancers uh where we just concluded our uh fallout rpg run um and we'll be bringing up some other spin-offs from that uh, as well as returning to our uh, Curse of Strahd campaign, yes, Strati, uh coming back this month after uh, we've had some people out with illness, so it'll be great to to get back there. Uh, you can also catch me over on QuestKeep, where we run uh, Eat, Slay, Love, and uh, as our main campaign in our homebrew world. Uh, sometimes I play a bear chef lorekeeper who uh, <laughs> it might be cursed, might just be lying, who knows? <laughs> Fantastic. But, yeah. And again, thank you. Thank you all so, so much. Hey, thank you all. I always love having people come on, and especially for the first time. Uh, all of you are new to this channel, although, Sam, you're always here watching and you know supporting in the comments, which I very much appreciate. Uh, I want to, before we head out, plug, uh, because I write for Even Footing Games, we are doing a Kickstarter, our very first Kickstarter, uh, for Babies and Broadswords, Pathfinder. Uh, the link has been throughout. I forgot to set up an actual command for it, which is my bad. Sorry, Aaron. Um, but go check that out. Go hit the notify me on launch. Uh, it helps us out. And just whatever you can do to help support would be fantastic. Uh, because this is the first game that I actually wrote for. Like the other baby stuff is great too. I just didn't write any of it. So, you know, go support this one as well. But it has been a blast playing with all of you. And thank you all for coming and watching.